Hi, it's November 4th, and yes, the Atlantic hurricane season does extend through November, and we have a new storm to watch in the Central Caribbean. This is Tropical Depression 18, freshly formed as of the latest National Hurricane Center advisory just before this recording. I've been talking about this on social media for the last few days. There's been a broad area of circulation north of Panama, and it's taken its time consolidating, but we finally have something a little more compact rotating within the eastern side of this circulation envelope. And so we have a tropical depression now with deep thunderstorm activity co-located with that circulation. And the whole thing is expected to move northwestward near or just west of Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and western Cuba over the next few days, eventually making it into the Gulf of Mexico. And we'll talk a little bit later about what happens once it gets there. But for the moment, immediate impacts are going to be to Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and Cuba. This is the zoomed in satellite view showing that there is rotation evident to your eye here. There's low level clouds rotating around this western side. You can see those westerlies coming in on the south side. And the circulation is somewhere in here with stronger southerlies on the eastern side. A little more difficult to see here on the satellite loop. But the strongest winds of about 35 miles per hour are being found in a belt kind of on this eastern side coming up out of the south. And you can see plenty of thunderstorm activity indicating deep moisture and the heavy rains that are going to rotate up and start impacting Jamaica in the near future. This is the aircraft reconnaissance data courtesy of the US Air Force showing the strongest winds in green here again well removed to the northeast of where the center of circulation is being found. Central pressure is 1006, not crazy low yet, and you can see that the winds around the core are not really exceeding 20 knots even at flight level, indicating that the circulation is still relatively weak but it is becoming more compact. Yesterday, there was only a mid-level circulation at this location, but it has burrowed down to the surface and we're seeing a tighter looking wind field begin to form here. This is giving us the signs that although nothing rapid is likely to happen in the next 24 hours, we're likely to see steady intensification of this system, given that environmental conditions will be by and large favorable over the next one to two days. This is the water vapor satellite loop showing the storm located about here there is an upper level trough over the northwestern Caribbean, which is imparting some southwesterly flow. So there's a touch of westerly shear here, along with some dry air located to the west of TD18. And that could get ingested and disrupt the central convection a little bit over the coming 24 hours. But as this upper level trough begins to move towards the west, upper level flow is expected to shift toward, uh, to out of the southeast over top of the system. This will likely lower the wind shear values to a level that's favorable enough to allow this to intensify fairly steadily as it moves near or west of Jamaica and through the Cayman Islands. And so during this portion of its journey here, expect an intensifying system likely to become a tropical storm soon. Tropical storm warnings are out for Jamaica. And then beyond Jamaica, we could even see it approach hurricane status as it moves through the Cayman Islands and near western Cuba. And so hurricane warnings and watches are out for those areas. As far as the track forecast goes, this is uh, the GFS mid-level steering flow forecast showing TD18 south of Jamaica right now and an almost triangle-shaped ridge to the north of the Caribbean right here, centered off the southeastern U.S., imparting easterly steering flow in the mid-levels north of the Caribbean. So what's going to happen here is TD18 will move north-northwest toward Jamaica initially and then be forced to bend a little bit toward the left or toward the northwest as it butts up against the southern periphery of this ridge bringing it toward the western end of Cuba and then ultimately into the Gulf of Mexico. This ridge will shift towards the east a little bit, so you'll see how this goes as the storm moves up on Wednesday morning and afternoon, crossing the uh, thin part of Cuba here on the western side, east of the Isle of Youth on the GFS. This is more toward the eastern side of the model guidance and close enough to bring elevated winds and rain bands to the Florida Keys on a forecast like this. So definitely something this region should pay attention to as this storm scrapes by on Wednesday morning or afternoon. Some other models are a little farther west, closer to the western tip of Cuba, which would bring the storm a little farther away from the Keys and lessen the impact there. But certainly possible we could see tropical storm watches and warnings issued for that region at some point over the next 24 to 48 hours. You'll see this mid-level ridge has shifted just a little bit east of Florida, so now it's centered there, and this opens up, at least in the mid-levels, this lane of flow towards the north or north-northwest toward the east central Gulf Coast. If TD-18 is a strong storm that holds together during its transit of the Gulf of Mexico, it would follow this mid-level flow toward the north Gulf Coast. However, it may struggle to remain strong during that journey because, well, it is November, and so there's a very strong jet stream 
to the north here that's gaining intensity during this time of the year and the water is also getting colder. So if we look at the GFS ensemble mean wind shear depiction for Thursday afternoon, this is where the storm is entering the central Gulf of Mexico. And you can see the wall of color shift here where blue indicates low shear as the storm enters the Gulf, but then there's a wall of red waiting for it as southwesterly shear picks up near the North Gulf Coast. And there's no escaping that wall at this time of year. So as the storm moves northward and gains latitude, it quickly encounters 30 or 40 knots of shear. And this level of shear will have an anomalously large impact on the storm because sea surface temperatures are much cooler than they typically are in the peak of the hurricane season here in November, while we still have warm water in the Caribbean like we do most of the year, and there is still the loop current in the Gulf which contains warm water. Outside of that loop current, things are getting pretty chilly up against the continental shelf near the northern and eastern Gulf Coast where water temperatures are several degrees cooler than they were just a few weeks ago during Hurricanes Helene and Milton. And as a result, when a storm is coming north toward the coast like this, once it encounters the cooler water, it shuts off thunderstorm activity in the inner core of the storm. And without thunderstorm activity, the storm has no hope of even putting up a fight against moderate levels of shear, much less 30 or 40 knots of shear. And for that reason, the storm would fall apart much more quickly than usual when that shear is applied to the vortex. And so we see a dramatic drop off in intensity on all modeling right now as TD18 moves north. So if we look at the GFS mid-level moisture plot as an example, you'll see the storm is in a field of deep green initially, and so we see intensification into a hurricane as the storm approaches Cuba. 977 millibars would be hurricane strength there. And as it moves into the Gulf, it does initially maintain that intensity, but you'll start to see dry air encroach out of the west and mid-level wind barbs out of that westerly direction toward the storm. And as it moves toward the north Gulf coast, you see decoupling occur where all the moisture is pushed off toward the east by the strong shear and the circulation is left barren with no thunderstorm activity at all as it moves toward the northwest. All this mid-level flow just pushing right through the storm and with waters too cold to allow the storm to put up a fight, it just decays immediately. And as it approaches the north Gulf Coast is dramatically weaker with any rain pushed off well toward the east. We even see this on high resolution hurricane modeling like HAFS B, which often has a high intensity bias. And we see it here depicting a category three hurricane, which you know might be a little too strong, uh, but it's hitting Cuba at 950 millibars. And you can see deep field of green indicating uh, high levels of moisture filling your screen. But as the storm ends up moving through the Gulf of Mexico, you see dry air start encroaching from the west and the storm eventually decouples as it moves toward the North Gulf Coast with a barren circulation, no thunderstorm activity over the circulation. There's the coastline of Louisiana there. All the moisture moves off toward the east and there's nothing left of this by the time it gets to the coast. And that's a, a consensus opinion amongst all the modeling right now. The track's gonna be a little fuzzy due to this as well, because if we go back to the mid-level steering flow here, again, the, the mid-level flow would move this toward the Gulf Coast if the storm holds on for long enough, but if it decouples earlier or if this trough over the Great Plains is a little slower at translating eastward, then the uh, low-level easterly flow that is uh, happening at the lower levels uh, remains entrenched for a longer time. The storm may end up decoupling and following that more toward the west. So we have some disagreement in the modeling. Will it go more toward the west-northwest or more north-northwest toward the Gulf Coast? And you'll see that disagreement in the ensemble members, this is the GFS showing 31 different possible versions of the future. The locations of TD18 possible locations are in red numbers here. And you'll see these move north northwest into the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, you'll see that a lot of them, you know, do move kind of toward the central Gulf Coast area. A few of them stay toward the south and move more toward the west. Whereas on the European ensemble, the vast majority of them end up turning almost due west here in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, and they do not make it up toward the central Gulf Coast. And uh, most of them end up decaying. Some of them stay far enough south over warm water that they're actually able to hold together for a longer time and move toward Mexico. But you can see kind of a great split in the possible future track of this storm. The farther east it is near Cuba, the more likely it will take the GFS track toward the central Gulf Coast, but if it's closer to the Yucatan Channel, more likely that it takes the European track. 
This is something that will still need a day or two to actually nail down. Uh, but if the storm is weakening considerably, it increases the odds that it starts turning toward the west while it's in the middle of the Gulf. Either way, you can see this theme here that, you know, a lot of these ensemble members too, you'll see kind of intense colors in the background of the image while it's in the southeastern Gulf that indicates, you know, stronger storms on a lot of these ensemble members, but you'll see some of these colors just disappear as it moves toward the Gulf Coast, indicating that most members show significant weakening or outright dissipation of the storm before it can even make it to the Gulf Coast. So that's the good news here is, you know, the calendar month, it's November, conditions are hostile for a hurricane trying to move north of the Florida Keys. If it gets north of that line, it's going to have a really hard time. So if it moves toward the North Gulf Coast, you can expect a weakening storm that could still bring potentially, you know, tropical storm force winds and some coastal flooding to the coast, uh, but it's not going to be a hurricane there in all likelihood, given what we know right now. This is the official National Hurricane Center forecast, the first one issued since this was officially classified as Tropical Depression 18. You can see it slides the storm northwest and uh, shows intensification into a tropical storm within the next 12 hours. So tropical storm warnings are out for Jamaica. There are hurricane warnings for the Caymans as the storm is expected to continue intensifying and could become a hurricane in this stretch of its journey here on approach to Cuba. So hurricane warnings for the Caymans, hurricane watches for the western portion of Cuba. And uh, yes, this could still be a hurricane as it enters the Gulf of Mexico, especially if it's a hurricane prior to crossing Cuba. It could remain one in this area where there's still the loop current and a patch of warm enough water to sustain a hurricane for some time over the east central Gulf. Uh, but then once it moves into this area of the Gulf of Mexico here, weakening is expected. You can see the Hurricane Center forecasting a drop off from hurricane back down to tropical storm. And uh, like I just showed you, conditions will become markedly more hostile here. And so if it makes a run at the central Gulf Coast, expect significant weakening of the storm. That doesn't mean impacts couldn't still occur, but we're not really concerned about a strong hurricane making it to the coast in that situation, more like a, a remnant circulation bringing strong winds, some heavy rains to some places east of the center, and then the potential for some coastal flooding as well, but certainly not the kind of major event that we got out of recent hurricanes in the Eastern Gulf like Helene and Milton. If the storm turns more toward the West, like we talked about being a possibility, then you know the Gulf Coast won't be seeing those impacts and we'll deal with that when we get there. Right now, there's too much uncertainty here five days out you know, to be really sure whether it's going this way or that way. We'll figure that out over the next couple of days, but uh, moral of the story is not expecting a strong hurricane event on the North Gulf Coast. Where folks should pay attention in the short term, especially for Wednesday, is the area of Southwest Florida and the Florida Keys, where if the storm is moving, especially along the Eastern side of this forecast cone across Western Cuba, and especially if it's a hurricane in this location, there could be a need for tropical storm watches and warnings. And uh, rain bands will probably be scraping the Florida Keys regardless. And so impacts could occur there starting as early as Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. So keep an eye out during the next couple of days for adjustments to this forecast and the potential issuance of watches and warnings, which won't yet be occurring this morning, uh, but could occur over the next 24 hours for these regions. Again, there'll be heavy rain as well in the Caribbean, Jamaica, especially southern facing areas of the topography here. Watch for heavy rain and flooding risk there, along with the Cayman Islands and Western Cuba, which will of course get heavy rains. And again, if the storm is moving north toward the Gulf Coast, you know, expect the potential for rain and areas of showers to be spreading into this part of the country. Uh, but again, if it approaches the coast, not expecting a tremendous wind threat if this were to make it to the Gulf Coast of the U.S. That's about it for this video. I'll try to have another one tomorrow and we'll continue watching Tropical Depression 18. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.